All right, forensic students, welcome back to um, our second part of our forensic toxicology lesson. So in part one, we got like a brief overview of what toxicology is and how it pertains to forensics. And then today we're going to look at some different disciplines of toxicology. So just to recap, forensic toxicology is the study of adverse effects of drugs and chemicals on different biological systems. Basically, it's just concerned with the quantities and effects of various drugs and toxins on the human body. And a forensic toxicologist is a medical professional that's going to work with the medical examiner and sometimes investigators to determine cause of death. So there are four divisions of forensic toxicology, and we're going to go through each of these and talk a little bit about each one today. So we have death investigation toxicology, which is also known as post-mortem toxicology. We also have human performance toxicology. Um, we have a division called doping control and then forensic workplace testing. So we'll go through each of those. So for post-mortem toxicology, of course, post-mortem means after death. So after somebody's death, if it's a suspicious death, they, they might be sent for an autopsy. And upon the autopsy, these toxicologists and these pathologists are going to determine if those toxins, um, first, if there are toxins in the victim system, and did those toxins and the quantities of those toxins lead to that person's death. They're going to do that through controlled testing. Um, this can take several weeks. This can take several months. It just sort of depends. So again, a toxicologist is going to uh, quantify and identify toxins in the body and then determine ultimately if this had anything to do with the person's cause of death. All right, so um, I don't know if you're familiar with the lady in the picture, but this is the late Whitney Houston. Um, she was a talented, very talented um, singer and songwriter, and she died mysteriously in like around 2012. So, of course, since she was famous um, and her death was a mysterious death, it was very sudden. They called in a toxicologist. They sent her body for um, an autopsy to try to determine um, what led to her death. So, they ultimately determined that the cause of death was drowning, but it was actually due to um, cocaine intoxication. So there was a process there, and we'll talk about this more when we get into like cause of death and manner of death and mechanism of death. But basically, Whitney Houston's cocaine use led to a, like a coronary artery disruption, which led to drowning. So one event led to another, which led to another. So while the initial cause of death was drowning, um, the mechanism of death was the coronary artery disruption, um, and that was due to cocaine use. So of course, a toxicologist had to work with forensic investigators to try to determine that. So the forensic investigators had to investigate, they had to um, try to figure out what toxins may have been in her system. They had to relay that information to the forensic toxicologist. And then ultimately, the forensic toxicologist had to test tissue samples um, and blood samples to determine um, that she was under the influence of cocaine. And of course, they figured out from there that that eventually led to her death. All right, the second division of toxicology is called human performance toxicology. Um, so this deals with the effects of alcohol and drugs on human performance and behavior. This can include a lot of different things. So basically impaired driving situations, vehicular homicide or assault cases, um, different drug facilitated crimes like sexual assault crimes, aircraft crimes um, or accidents, motor vehicle accidents, any sort of accident that has to be investigated and there is suspicions that somebody may have been under the influence, um, then they're going to call in that forensic toxicology um, toxicologist from there. And um, these toxicologists are going to be asked to test blood and urine samples uh, that are often submitted by an investigator. All right, the third uh, division of forensic toxicology is uh, doping control. So different governing bodies 
of competitive and intramural sports are going to have different rules regarding performance enhancing, enhancing drug use. Um, and that's basically to protect the amateurs and professional athletes uh, that participate in these sports. So it's just a way to maintain a fair and even competitive standard, but they exist. So um, most, most of these intramural sports and professional sports are going to have doping control agents or agencies um, that they use to test their athletes. So if you recognize the guy in the picture, this is Lance Armstrong. Um, he's a, per, a former professional road cyclist. He was stripped of seven Tour de France medals. Um, and that was after he admitted using performance enhancing drugs. So um, a doping control agent was, was there to um, test those blood samples and urine, urine specimens. And they were able to um, verify that when he admitted he was telling the truth. Um, this doesn't just happen in, um, you know, a cyclist. This happens with all professional sports, Olympic athletes, major league baseball players, NBA, WNBA BA athletes. Um, they're all somewhat involved in scandals from time to time. All right, so the last division of human performance toxicology is um, what we call workplace drug testing. So this is when a toxicologist is called into a place of employment and they test employees for certain drugs. Um, and so we know that the use of drugs by people in the workplace can have significant safety and economic consequences. And so workers in these safety sensitive positions are not supposed to use recreational drugs or take certain medications without a prescription. And so from time to time, these workplace toxicologists will come in um, and they can do pre-employment testing. They can do random drug testing. Um, or what we call for cause drug testing. So um, something's going on. We need to make sure all of our workers are clean. They're not under the influence. And so a forensic toxicologist could be called in for that. All right, so the last thing I wanna point out, I'm gonna send you on a little hunt. Um, if you'll go to YouTube and type in the history of toxicology and forensics, there is a TED Talk that is really good um, at going all the way back like several hundred years to one of the first cases that used toxicology to solve that case. Very interesting. So if you have time, um, take a look at that video. If not, I'll see you in the next video um, where we're going to be talking about death and the human body.